Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And I'm joined today in the Double Tree Hotel at Norton by Ron Lyle. How are you doing Ron? How you doing Ross? Great to see you pal. Where's to your Christmas? your family and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you to Ron. all your viewers, Merry Christmas. Where's your uh, Christmas jumper Ron? Well I thought this should be quite befitting, I just need a felt tip to draw some reindeers and <laughs> sleighs on it. <laughs> How you been anyway? Good pal, thank you. You alright? Full of the festive spirit. Yeah. Uh, it's been an event for you year for your uh, Dennis, hasn't it, really? Uh, I noticed in your press release you've picked Josh Whale for fighter at year from your stable. Um, I think he deserves it. Um, because he's, you know, some people, you know, people are quick to slag off people, aren't they? Saying, oh, he's on scrappy. Well, me, his dad, and yourself. Yeah. Uh, people like us knew we weren't on the scrap heap and he got plenty of mileage left and we've proved it. And uh, that's the reason why I picked him as my fighter of the year because it's, I mean, people's quick to write people off and uh, they're quick to turn on people. Well, Josh has proved that he's got plenty in the tank and he's proved what substance he's got and he's got class inside and outside the ring. So, great people to work with. Yeah, go on, he's the one who's like, you know, like I said, he's, 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 we're on a downward spiral. He's got a new lease of life and he's been getting opportunities and he's proved that he's been worthy of them. So I'm so pleased for him and they're a pleasure to work with, like I said before. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're good people to work with, aren't they? So Josh has gone free and out with you this year. Uh -huh. uh, so 271 days after losing, he's an IBO international champion. It's not bad going, is it? And it's and it, what it is. It's not just the not just the title. It's it's like in the manner in which he's, he's achieved them three and all, uh, and it, it underlies how much mileage he's still got left. Yeah. And we can manoeuvre him into some major fights. And, uh, and it's all right. People saying you know when you throw one or two names about world champions and things like that, and they say oh you, you just you, you're having a joke. Well. We're, when I had Carl Thompson, were we having a joke when I put him in with David Ayer, when I put him in with Sebastian Rothman, people wrote him off. Yeah. A lot more so than such as Josh, Josh Whale. Uh, and look what he did to them two. So, yeah. who knows? I mean, when Matt, Matthew Hatton fought Sal Alvarez, uh, people said, what a mismatch. Well, he went, he went to points with him. So, there's been a lot down in history. Look at Rocky Bilbao against Apollo Creed. He, he did all right when he were wrote off, didn't he? <laughs> He went distance. He went the distance. Adrian! <laughs> that coffee's kicking in a bit. It is a bit too much caffeine. I'm like our little ones on refreshers and smarties. <laughs> too much caffeine, I get hyper. <clears throat> we need a tea break then, don't we? Yeah. I'm mean, going to introduce to my followers uh, the legendary John Daly. Is, uh, your brother uh, directed a film called Islander, didn't he? And he went, when Saturday comes with That's Sean Bean, won it? Yeah, when Saturday comes, uh, used to work for Christopher Lambert. Christopher that, Lambert, that's, that's it. That's it, and the Islander, yeah, he did the Islander, yeah, Islander yeah. too. He's yeah. directed that. So, is G you know Jimmy Muir, the character that Sean Bean plays, that's is that, because yeah. he went to school with you, didn't he? Is that a real character? No, no, it was based on a true story. Yeah. Based on a true story. Based on a true, is he a good footballer, Sean Bean? No, no. Yeah, Jimmy were a good footballer. <laughs> He's not a very good actor either. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that'll not be down well, will it, Dennis? Should have been a comedian. Anyway, go on, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> See, were you coming out with that? You must get on all right with Sean Bean then, dear. It's not them bad to say we're a bad actor. <laughs> Old Sean. Uh, so what's what's in store for Josh Whale now then, Dennis? February 21st, what next? Um, we've got one or two options out here and we're looking for a meaningful fight for him and a homecoming. Oh, you're right to mention what we just spoke about. No, uh, yeah, not, no, not really. No, all right. Then. Uh, so we're leaving his options open. We, right. uh, nothing's confirmed yet, but you know what we're like. Us, mm. we, uh, we don't look for plan A. We've got B and C. So um, you know, this things. Even though it's Christmas, even though Santa Claus has set off from Lapland, we're still grafting and making the exam for our fighters. Mm. All right. What next for Tommy Frank, Dennis? Um, Tommy Frank is going to be made the mandatory for the IBO world title. Yeah. Um, so that is the plan A. 
we've still got his Commonwealth and the great thing about Tommy he can go flyweight or superfly whichever uh, weight division suits us where the most meaningful and sensible fight for us uh, comes up so he's come a long way in 12 18 months and Tommy from people not thinking you know about Tommy Frank where he's on a lot of people's lips now so a major success and a, like another one a pleasure to work with Glenn's done a great job as well we've got a smashing team behind Tommy and uh, there's some kids coming through from Sheffield with Glenn with John Fuchs obviously we're going to get on to Richard Towers uh, who's obviously my dear friend and we're going to achieve one or two things together as well so it's going to be a great buzz in the future. Yes, uh are we, are we talking about the signings that we, you're on about or are we not speaking about the new signings now? I don't know, you're throwing a lot at me today, Russ. <laughs> I'm trying to get some well, like, You look Peter? like Teller Savalas behind here with Lollipop and you're asking a lot of questions <laughs> like What's a detective. What, what about Peter Howe? I'm going to ask you, Peter Howe? Perry Howe. Peter Howe, Perry Howe. Perry Howe. He's a boxer, isn't he? What do you think? Do you think he's got potential? Uh, he's, just, he's just had a draw on him. Yeah, but the kid... Uh, Pere is is learning on the job. I think he was a bit nervous, wasn't he? He was a bit nervous, and I, and, I, and I thought he'd done enough to win it. Um, yeah. Selswell is a great story, represented his country or fought for his country in the military. He's, he's an absolute gentleman um, and he's as brave as they come. Yeah. And he's going to learn. Um, he's just moved trainers, I'm just told, that he's gone with Robert Riley, who's one of the first fighters I ever worked with, um, who's got his own gym, so he's going to get his head down and learn the trade and uh, I think you'll see a big improvement in Perry because he's just got a will to learn and succeed, so uh, we, we won't write that kid off at all. What about uh, Cash Alley, Dennis? What next for Cash? Um, Cash will be on the Barnes the show, mm. February 21st, in probably an eight rounder and uh, he will be um, moving up the rankings and my, my words he's a changed kid since Richard's got hold of him and, and, and got in his head and obviously the controversy of the bite of David Price I think he were a, I think he were a crossroads sort of thing in his career where he's realised what he's got to be where he's got to be at and um, he's got to be professional and uh, and he's knuckling down and he's a different kid okay. What about Suffy? Suff, 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 is, is, is a, I like his attitude, I think he's got stacks of ability and I think um, Fuki's doing a great job with him and I think he's going to trouble a lot of super bantams, yeah. I think, uh, I think Suff's one for the future, he's improving so much and uh, he lives the life obviously and uh, I just like what Fuki's doing with him. And like I say, he's, 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 great, he's a great kid to work with and uh, I think 2020 is when he's going to make his mark as well. What about Nathan Owens? I think he's one for the future. Kane Salvin as well, he's doing well isn't he? Kane's doing great. Um, very quiet kid then. Very isn't quiet he? kid, he's got to go out here and sell himself more. Uh, but love, lovely, lovely fellow, he comes from a lovely family. You think uh, Kane needs a bit of confidence then? Because he keeps winning but like, he doesn't I'm, seem to... But, uh, look confident to me when I've been in his company. Yeah, he's, but he's a shy kid. And he's not comfortable around camera and that. No, you know? but some people are, so that's maybe where you can give him a bit of coaching. Yeah, but if he'd got a bit of your front, he'd be like uh, <laughs> no, Des O'Connor, have not, his own show. I'm not very comfortable around camera, so I'm going to be quiet. That's yeah. why you put your glasses on so nobody recognises you. Is that what it is? You like, like one of them four No, no comment. No comment. These two gentlemen in front of me used to be in the same class at school from age of five up to but, fifteen. No, but can I tell you, he's a lot older than me. <laughs> because he used to copy on me, so he used to put me in their class because I were a lot cleverer. Yeah. So he used to put me up, so he used to copy off me, and that's why he's ended up in the state where he's in. Yeah, but he didn't have any A levels at all. Levels. Nothing. These two used to go to school. When they were 15, they used to go to school in Dennis's Triumph. <laughs> park next to Dolomite teachers. Sprint. Dolomite Sprint, wasn't it, Dennis? Dolomite Sprint. He was parked inside Ed Master's car. <laughs> I was in trouble at school, so when I was going to take register to Ed Master's office, they were in trouble. You see, Dennis, uh, you are, you're doing flexi hours, Dennis. Dennis, you'll say, I'm doing business. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, I, didn't go, I didn't go to school very often. Probably a bit like yourself, Russell. Yeah, I did go. school. Uh, <laughs> school. Right, uh, a lot of people have, uh, well, a lot of people, a couple of people have mentioned to me, and a couple of people were talking about it, the Carl Thompson story. It seems to be one that goes under radar, Dennis. So, how did you meet Carl Thompson? And, uh, I've got Ricky Atten, and so um, I met uh, some people who were involved with Ricky, who had got an association with Carl. And obviously, he'd got that controversy where he lost his world title to Johnny Nelson, and he and it upset him, and it's still an open wound probably to this day with Carl. Voted the worst stoppage of the 90s in the right. magazine so, in a title so fight. One of, I forgot his, his name as, as we're speaking, but a fellow who were involved with Ricky and he were close to Carl asked if I'd be interested in uh, promoting Carl. Uh, and Maurice Coe I'd met, who, were a, who was a quality trainer, he were training Carl. And then it's Bingham, they were all involved with Carl, uh, from uh, blessing Phil Martin's origin. Um So I said, would I be interested? Anyway, Carl come back and he didn't look a million dollars. So we got him some warm-up fights, two or three warm-up fights, and then we uh, we managed to get him um, a shot at Sebastian Rothman's IBO world title. And uh, that was a good fight, that. Great fight, and Carl were getting beat well then, and I thought, oh, I've done the right thing, because I'd asked, he uh, played Richie possum Davis. though, didn't he? Yeah, he played possum, but I'd said to Richie possum Davis he were, he were ready to to to, uh, to stop the fight in Rothman's favour. And I'd said to Richie Davis, look, give Carl every chance because sometimes his balance is not brilliant. Yeah, go, and he let it go and then uh, Carl, within he a second or two, chinned him and the rest That's were history. And then uh, obviously David A, Adam Booth with David A wanted to fight Carl for the world title and I think they thought it were an easy route to a world title and obviously, I, against my advice, they, they wanted to take that fight and we know what happened. You, did you tell Adam Booth not to take the fight? I did, he, he rang me and says, we want you to take, we want you to deliver this fight for us. You're our promoter, you're, Carl, you're Carl Thompson's promoter, you've got to deliver us the best fight. Right? Yeah, that's true. And as, a, and as a fan, I'd like to see that fight, but I'm going to do you, uh, give you a bit of advice, and who am I to give Adam Booth a bit of advice, but at that time, Adam had just got David A and was making his way with David A. I said, uh, it's too dangerous for, for David to fight at this stage. Carl's still very, very dangerous. He went, yeah, but we want this fight. And I said to Adam, I said, remember this conversation, Adam, I, I'll make that fight, but I think it's too dangerous for David at this stage, and obviously the rest were history, and, and he stopped David. And obviously Carl Thompson, he's probably one of the hardest men you've ever met in his day. Yeah, absolutely. When he was a multi-champion as well, wasn't he? Such an unassuming fella. I remember ringing him up, because I, I always had a lot of respect for, for Carl. I don't and know I what you're going to say now. <laughs> and I rings him up. And I'm right excited because we've managed to pull the IBO uh, world title fight. And I went, Carl, and it talked very broad, like in, uh, in this Bolton accent. And I says, Carl, it's Dennis. He went, Hello, Dennis, you all right? And I goes, Carl, I've got some great news for you. Oh, yeah, what's that? And I went, uh, <laughs> We've got world title, Sebastian Rothman, uh, June 23rd, or whatever day it was. So he went, uh, I went, Carl. And he went, Quiet. I went, Carl. I went, Go on then, what? I'm expecting to go, Yes. And I went, Carl, what do you think? He went, I'm just. Wondering what rotor our lass is on. I went, <laughs> what do you mean? He went, well, she's working, she's a nurse at the hospital, and I've got to check with her. She's got to check with her. Well, that's what rotor she's on. We've got a world title. It should be all right, but I'll just check what rotor she's on. I don't know. But that's how down to earth Carl mm. was. He was just a down to earth fellow with you, with no premises. Just a family man. Honest and just an honest man. family man, I agree. Great. That's why I loved him. Working with me because you're just an honest to goodness fellow. Mm. Come on, Rush, you ask me a question. For I'm going to ask. I'm going to no. I'm going to ask you. I tell I tell you something. I have somebody who follows the channel, and he's dying of cancer. He's called Stephen Davy from Devon. He used to do security for Scott Dan. So I just wonder if you give him a mention because he always follows your your shows and that. Oh. So it's 49 Bless year you, old, Stephen. 49. Respect to you. Respect to you, pal, and keep uh, keep your chin up, pal. And uh, my dad died of that horrible. Disease and, uh, mm. um, but 
I had laughs with my dad up until the And he's watching he's watching this every day and it says it cheers him up. Uh, I, I cheered him up. He had he had fun. He got a fantastic sense of humour, so keep your sense of humour, pal, and uh, my heart goes out to you and respect to you, pal, and I'm sure you're a soldier, pal. Uh, moving on from that, uh, Callum Smith, should he fight John Ryder in rematch? Because the word is that Eddie's backing him into a corner to fight John Ryder. Yes, I do. But they don't want do. it, Gallagher and Callum. Well, I, th I think he should do. I mean, it's, it's like controversy. A lot of people thought John Ryder won that fight. So, uh, did you, how did you have it, Dennis? Um, I think John could have nicked it, yeah. No. And I think even if it's a close fight, he should get it on again because it, there wasn't nothing. It weren't definitive. That means like it, it wasn't one so so one sided. It, it were too close. So obviously they should fight again, and, and then it creates, you know, public want to see close fights. We want to see competition. Yeah. We don't want to see Liverpool playing Crew Alexander every week because you know what result's going to be. Yeah, yeah. Or Chef United playing Chef Wednesday because. Yeah, because you were an owl or when you know. Oh, he's a blade. Blade. And I'm blue. But we're, we're, we're knocking on door to Premiership. We're third in the Championship. They're what about on, United? They're, they're doing well, aren't they, Dan? We're on a 50 United. Premiership. Look, I'm but, but we've had no money to spend and we're 50 Premiership. They've got, a, they've got a prince from Saudi Arabia, so they've got plenty. Mm. And uh, we've got a tuna man from Thailand. <laughs>